In this video, I will introduce you to my PhD dissertation, Indexical Architecture, Prominent Positions, Applications, and the Web. This research was carried out at the Chair for Digital Architectonics at ETH Zurich Department of Architecture under the supervision of Ludger Hovestad, Vera Bullmann, and Philip Morel. It was submitted and evaluated in late 2017, and since then it is part of ETH Catalog Online. It is basic research work and it deals with information and code in architecture. It is motivated by the abundance of computer of the, by the abundance of information circulating on the web by all the computers sensing the world of architecture online. On a web browser, we can read theories of architecture, articles, manifestos, we can look at images, renderings, and sketches of buildings and buildings to be. This condition for this work, it's novel, novel enough and challenging enough, challenging enough because it is putting into the test concepts that are very relevant and long lasting in architecture. Concepts around, around uh, ontologies, classes, classes, semantic definitions. This work seeks continuity in architecture theory and eventually in praxis. And it looks for the concepts, for the meters and values that can help to get stability in this midst of information. It is divided in three chapters. The first chapter investigates the contemporary discourses in architecture that deal with this global condition. It asks three questions. What is the difference between physical infrastructure and the digital infrastructure? How to deal with this abundance of online information? And what are the codes that, codes that can bring this information into adequate proportions in architecture? The works of Rem Kulhas, Patrick Schumacher, Peter Eisenman, Negroponte, Alexander, and others are reviewed here. Two conclusions became apparent at this point. <clears throat> One, that the digital infrastructure is recognized, but is treated, treated in terms of how it appears in terms of bridges, in terms of cables, in terms of computer rooms and server rooms. And that the codes of these architects cannot deal or don't want to deal with, million, with millions of information online, unless they are treated in purely computational terms, in pure terms of logic. The next chapter turned then into information and communications technology for some answers, specifically the web. As the web in the last years has established this network of computers and, and created the protocols <coughs> for things to circulate in it, for observations to be coded. And not only that, but also the web has created the tools to navigate the network in a very precise way. <clears throat> this chapter looks at search engine, content sharing platforms, and social networks in order to construct an abstract understanding of what they do and how they do it, an understanding of the technical codes. Interesting conclusions that these techniques work with the idea that observations online are decoupled, decoupled from pre definitions of categories, of ontologies, of semantics. Observations are coming from everywhere, they mean nothing per se, and the same observation can be put in different constellations and make sense even if these constellations are arguing for opposite sides. These techniques as well rely heavily on the role of chance on the role, therefore, the observer, the individual, the void is central. This chapter looks at the works of Markov, Feynman, Pierce, uh, Saussure, Chomsky, Michel Serre, among others. A last chapter then animates these concepts and tries to put them in relation to the initial architectural question. It shows three applications that mimic the crawling, the indexing, and the modeling that Google, Yandex, and Viadu implement. They deal with information source, source from Tumblr, Facebook, Wikimedia Commons, and other online, online communities of architecture. And they put together as well personal instruments 
to navigate this network. One of my favorite applications here is the one that creates the conditions for a fictional character, Mr. Robot, to chatter with all the Swiss architects. It is about finding who may be the best fit to work with Elliot Alderson. They discuss materials, they discuss houses, they discuss societies. A very interesting con conclusion here is that these techniques are blurring the borders between objects and subjects, as things from different natures can be technically encoded in the same, and therefore there are common planes for comparison between them. There are common planes for them to start establishing channels of communication. <clears throat> Another conclusion that became apparent is that the idea of making these generic search these generic tools, the idea of making these generic to tools specific to architecture is not very popular. That these tools don't play a leading role or a relevant role in modeling and designing frameworks in architecture. <clears throat> if uh, we agree that architecture has always addressed the whole world, whatever the world at, the, at that time mean, this work can be seen as a proto-treatise of, of digital architecture, as it asks how to articulate something that is not there by looking at everything that is there. The conclusion of this research work directed me in a slightly different direction, as now I am not looking at data streams, but rather to personal assemblages, to personal collections of images and movies and text that are in resonance with the community of the department and, the, and my group. Nevertheless, I still deal with, with custom-made instruments to navigate these assemblages, these personal collections. As well, I am involved in developing <coughs> a framework, a design framework for digital architecture. A design framework that works with millions of images, with millions of text and 3D models all at once, and, and creating this plenty as a tandem for architecture and, and the internet. So the idea is how can this abundance of information can, can help the architect to articulate a stand against an architectural brief, for example. If you want to know more about my work, you can go to digitalpentecost.online. Thanks for watching.